In his book Blitzed, the German author Norman Oller writes how the Nazis used many different drugs to fuel their campaigns in World War II, most notably cocaine, heroin, crystal meth and various painkillers. In this video we're gonna talk about Nazis on drugs. What drugs did the Nazis use in World War II? Because it's good to know not only the history of it, but also the physiology and you know what happens when you do take these drugs. Drug use was actively encouraged in the Wehrmacht by officers to make the troops more alert, have higher endurance, and not get tired during long days of marching or fighting. Norman Oler writes, Soldiers were awake for days, marching without stopping, which wouldn't have happened if it weren't for crystal meth. Hitler himself and many other Nazi party leaders were using different drugs for their health conditions and to create a sense of euphoria. History records suggest that Hitler suffered from irritable bowel syndrome, coronary sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, syphilis and tinnitus, including other diseases. He started using amphetamine after 1937 and became addicted to it in 1942. Hitler's personal doctor, Dr. Morell, gave him daily injections of methamphetamine until his death in 1945. Other drugs he took included opiates, cocaine and barbiturates that all have effects on the central nervous system. Dr. Morell's personal records claim he gave Hitler up to 800 injections over the nine years they worked together. In July of 43, he had a, a decisive meeting with Mussolini uh, because Mussolini wanted to leave uh, with Italy uh, the, the, the evil axis. He wanted to leave and Hitler was very depressed about that. And Morell on that, on that day uh, in July, uh, for the first time used a drug called Oikodal Eucodal, which is an, a half synthetic opiate, an opioid, a pharmacological co cousin of heroin, you could say, but with a much stronger euphoric uh, momentum to it. And after a good shot of Eucodal, you feel extremely good. And this is exactly what happened to Hitler. And um, there's reports from that meeting with Mussolini where he just um, didn't stop talking and was in such a euphoric mood that he easily convinced Mussolini to stay on board. So when did the Nazis start using drugs? Germany's pharmaceutical industry was the world's most advanced and financed during World War I already, thanks to the invention of morphine by a German chemist Friedrich Sertner in 1804. Morphine is a powerful painkiller and opioid that is often used by the military and doctors to reduce the feeling of pain. Morphine was patented and globally distributed by the German pharma company Merck in 1827. During the Nazi party rule, Merck, which back then was named Verwirtschaftsführer, was manufacturing products for the war, such as narcotics, supplements, biocides and other chemicals. Merck is still operational today. Another major German pharma company, Bayer, started using heroin, a derivative of morphine, with great success to substitute morphine for cough suppressants. However, although Bayer marketed heroin as a non-addictive morphine substitute, it was soon discovered that heroin had the highest rates of addiction among its users. The name heroin was coined from the German word heroish, which means heroic or strong, because the drug also had euphoric and invigorating effects. Heroin was legal during the First German Empire or the Second Reich, and it was widely used in World War I to treat chronic pain and respiratory conditions. After Germany's defeat in World War I, Bayer lost some of its trademark rights to heroin under the Treaty of Versailles. Bayer is also still operational today, and is one of the biggest pharma companies in the world. In the Weimar Republic, most drugs were legal or allowed with a medical prescription to relieve pain and improve performance. Many World War I veterans were addicted to painkillers and drugs for pain relief. These tolerant drug policies were adopted by the Nazi party as well in the Third Reich. Despite the tolerant views on drugs, the Nazi party was more critical of alcohol use and smoking. Hitler stopped drinking alcohol around 1930s when he adopted a vegetarian diet. He encouraged his close associates to do the same. <laughs> So what kind of drugs did the Nazis use in World War II? In 1937, a Berlin pharmaceutical company, Temmler, came out with a methamphetamine called pervitin, which quickly became a bestseller among the population. The Wehrmacht found out that pervitin reduces fear, uh, it reduces your need to sleep, and it makes you uh, more aggressive. So these three reasons seemed perfect for the German army in 1940. Drugs came into play, for example, for the army, um, in the war as a sort of pharmacological weapon. 
just as they used uh, real weapons. Churchill said to his French colleague um, Daladier when the Germans attacked that uh, he shouldn't worry so much about the speed of the German army because after 12 hours um, they would have to rest but uh, the German army being high on methamphetamine didn't have to, to rest. Churchill didn't know about this so in the first uh, three days and three nights the Germans made uh, huge advances by just not stopping and surprising the Western Allies this way. Because Pervitin had a really serious hangover and some even became violent, it was not allowed to be used by the troops after 1940 and was tightly regulated by the military. It would be interesting to think about what the course of the war would have looked like if the Wehrmacht kept on taking the drugs. The Nazis weren't the only ones taking drugs to fuel their war efforts. Allied troops and pilots were also often given amphetamines to keep themselves awake. The drug of choice for the Allies was Benzedrine, which is an amphetamine sulfate. It's estimated that 72 million amphetamine tablets were consumed by the Allies during World War II. In the US, methamphetamine is classified as a Schedule II drug, which means it has a very high rate of abuse and addiction. Despite that, it has been used in almost all military conflicts of the last century. It was used in Vietnam and probably Iraq. Even Syrian jihadist fighters are reported to be using a drug called Captagon, which is another amphetamine that provides energy and euphoria, making you not care about pain or death. Japanese kamikaze suicide bombers in World War II also took methamphetamine, known as storming tablets, before their runs. Both meth and cocaine increase two neurotransmitters in the brain, serotonin and dopamine. This increases the person's motivation, energy levels and puts them into euphoria. Other effects include higher physical activity, decreased appetite, faster breathing, elevated blood pressure and irregular heartbeat. So basically it makes war and fighting more effortless. Because of the quick release in dopamine, the drug encourages drug taking behavior to repeat the experience or to get the high. Long term use of methamphetamine increases the risk of infections, weight loss, severe dental problems which is called meth mouth, anxiety, memory loss, sleeping problems, violence, paranoia, hallucinations and impaired judgment. Some of these changes may reverse after stopping the drug use for a year, but other changes are permanent. A recent 2015 study discovered that people who have used methamphetamine even once have an increased risk of developing Parkinson's disease. When the Allies bombed the Tremler pharmaceutical factory in Berlin in 1945, the Nazis and Hitler's drug consumption came to a sudden halt. As Hitler's drug supply ran out, he suffered from severe withdrawal symptoms like paranoia, psychosis, low dopamine, rotting teeth, extreme shaking, kidney failure and delusions. During the last week of his life, Hitler was seen shaking and cold all the time, as is common for people who go into withdrawal. This shock can often result in death. Today we call, we call methamphetamine crystal meth, but it's, today it's produced under uh, different um, conditions in illegal labs. So methamphetamine by Temla was, was a pure product. Pervitin was taken orally, so the effect is milder than um, snorting crystal meth. According to 2009 statistics, there are up to 25 million amphetamine abusers in the world, and the numbers continue increasing. There is also a massive opioid crisis, where people are addicted to opioids to treat their pain. It's estimated that between 1999 and 2016, 463,000 Americans have died from opioids. Painkiller prescriptions have tripled from 76 million to 219 million. In conclusion, drugs are very widely used in war and other high-stakes professions. They do apparently improve performance and vigilance, but at the same time, it has many negative side effects on the person's long-term health. Addiction is almost guaranteed with prolonged use of these drugs, and it changes the brain permanently. Unfortunately, war is war, and many countries wouldn't hesitate to give their soldiers speed to gain an extra edge in combat. If you want to improve your mental performance, alertness and wakefulness, then the best thing for that is sleep. Your body and brain repair themselves during sleep, and poor sleep is linked to neurodegeneration and reduced cognition. Check out my Total Sleep Optimization video course to correct your sleep wakefulness cycles, circadian rhythms, and speed up recovery. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.